As you walk down State Street in Bowling Green, Kentucky, you're traveling through an era important in our state's history. This is the Shake Rag Historic District, still home to churches, school buildings, old businesses and homes that once made up a community that grew steadily after the Civil War as a segregated part of the city for many African Americans. The main footprint between Fifth street and the river is, is still there, the main footprint of the community. A lot of the houses are still there, the ice plant is still there, um, uh, but it's, it's, it's exciting to see it rebuild. They are in the process of trying to get a Black History Museum into that area. As Maxine Ray shares images that she has collected from Shake Rag's history, you hear the fond memories and love she has for this stretch of State Street. Oh, it was a very vibrant, live community. Uh, several, several hundred people lived in the community. Uh, it was, it had the sense of home, the sense of family, and the sense of place. And it was just a exciting community to live in and to be in. People had opportunities to share lives together. They weren't necessarily welcome in other parts of the community. And so when they came to Shake Rag, that was their safe place where they could gather together and worship. They could have parties. They could uh, go to entertainment facilities. They could go shopping. Uh, they could walk the streets and it not be an issue. As you walk down the street, you see many different styles of architecture that were home to this constantly growing middle-class neighborhood. The homes of two doctors from the late 1800s still stand. Dr. Z.K. Jones worked out of this wonderful Italianate brick home built in 1875. It was built by Underwood, who was an early mayor of Bowling Green, and his father, I believe, was a slave owner. And then in later years, it was purchased by Z.K. Jones, who was an African-American doctor, and his father was a slave. Its mansard roof and the artistic flow of stonework make this a prominent building in Bowling Green to this day. And built in 1890, this Victorian style was home to Dr. O.D. Porter. A number of bungalows built in the 1930s line State Street. They were home not only to families, but to businesses as well, like Alice's Beauty Shop and local dentists. One of my favorite buildings and one of the ones that I think is, um, represents a typical um, kind of early 20th century built residential cottage is Miss Alice's Beauty Salon. And it is a folk Victorian vernacular frame cottage with a front porch. It has some of the Victorian architectural de detailing around the columns and it just has a lot of character. The halfway point of State Street is watched over by the beautiful stained glass windows of State Street Baptist Church. While the church has seen two major fires, along with the first cornerstone, the exterior walls have survived. It was the, in, in some of the smaller black communities, it was the focal point of the community because that was where you had all your church socials, you had, uh, Valentine parties, we had mother and daughter teas, uh, father and son banquets. At the corner of Second and State, the Southern Queen Hotel still stands, once serving many a black traveler who could not stay in a white hotel. This was a very busy traveled road. This is the Dixie Highway, and so there were lots of people on this highway, including African Americans. And for them to be able to stop here in this community and find a place to stay was a, a great respite for them. Uh, they didn't have to worry about sleeping in a car or, or sleeping in a tent, uh, which some of them did carry in their automobiles because they knew this was a problem. Education was an integral part of Shake Rag, from the Bowling Green Academy to the State Street High School now marked by the gymnasium that still stands. We had uh, very highly educated teachers. There are a lot of the teachers uh, in our high schools had their master's degree. And of course there was our principal, he was a Dr. Buford, he had his doctorate degree. 
We never thought of not going to school, even after high school. We knew we were going to attend school somewhere. We knew we couldn't go to Western, but we knew we were going to attend school somewhere. Too often in um, American history, we've tried to clip out pieces of history. And I, I think that's a very dangerous thing uh, because when you start to clip it out, you lose it. And it only takes one generation to forget. I see the future of Shake Rag as being a place where you can live, work, play. Um, hopefully the houses will stay and hopefully people will take advantage of some of the historic preservation financial incentives to rehab those buildings and continue to use them. And, and, and I see it being a, continuing to be a viable piece of downtown Bowling Green. And while Shake Rag has grown smaller and smaller, and families have grown and moved away, it still holds a place close to the heart for people like Maxine. It was a thriving community, very, very, very happy people, very worked hard, played hard, went to school hard. We went to school hard in that, in that uh, community, but we enjoyed it. Uh, it was a place where uh, everybody knew everybody and everybody took care of each other but uh, it was just an exciting time.